Good evening, Gothlings. Once again, Beautiful Pre Cosmetics is back with another video. This time we're going to pour winter soaps. I'm learning the ins and outs of some video editing software so you get to see the whole process with actual video. So we're going to start things out with about 22 ounces of ultra clear soap. This is a glycerin base, and uh, I really only need about 21, but you lose some in the container, and roughly six ounces of white. And that's all we're going to need to make four bars of winter today. So starting things off, I did these in advance, and I want to mention that every single one of these trees is cut wrong. All of them. I, I just lost my little brain, and I added those little bases at the bottom, and I shouldn't have. Normally the trees don't have those bases, they're just cut at the trunks. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just thinking about uh, All Hallows' Eve, where it has the cemetery base, and just cut them all wrong. But we're going to pretend that I cut them correctly, because in the end, no one will know, and no one will care, but normally I don't do that. So we're going to have to have a mold, obviously. Uh, this is my standard mold. I have a few of these, but they're all exactly the same. They're my, you know, my mold. And we've put the clear soap into a container to melt it. Put the mold back down, and I'm uh, going to drop the soap into the microwave. You can probably hear the beeping behind me, um, where we're going to put it in for about a minute and a half in order to melt it down to a consistency where we can begin to use it. So winter takes a little longer to pour than a lot of the other soaps that I do, and you'll see why in a minute. While the soap is melting, we're going to get this uh, Snowflake Sparkle Mica. You can't really see it uh, here, but it is really sparkly. It uh, looks just like a white powder on the screen, but it's a very sort of sparkling, iridescent kind of powder. And that's what we're going to use to create our snow effect. Once the soap is melted and out of the microwave, we're going to bring it over and we're going to pour a lens into each one of the four cavities. You can see here it's not completely melted, and that's okay. That's okay, because it means it's pretty cool in temperature. And that's fine, because it'll, it'll harden faster and we'll be able to use it much more quickly than we could if it were super hot. But you'll see that I'm going to be pouring the uh, lens in as soon as I spray it with some rubbing alcohol. And that's what that blue glow is. My, my alcohol bottle is uh, cobalt blue. So whenever you see that, you'll know that that's just rubbing alcohol. And that allows the soap to uh, release more cleanly. It uh, breaks up any surface tension of any film that's still in the mold and uh, prevents bubbles. So pouring just a little bit, about an eighth of the way up, with just plain, clear, melted soap. There's no fragrance or anything in it. It's just plain, ultra clear. And I'm going to spray it with a little bit of alcohol to take out any bubbles. You'll see I spray a lot of alcohol as this process goes along. And what it does is it decreases the surface tension and breaks up uh, any colors or any bubbles, anything that's in there. So once that's done, I'm going to put the trees into the molds and shove them down so that they're fully flush against the bottom side of the mold. As I said, normally the trees don't have that base. I, I really don't know what I was thinking, but um, my guess is that I was just thinking about All Hallows Eve where it does have it. But either way, you still have to do it the same way. You just push the uh, base of the tree down so that it's sitting flush against the bottom of the mold. Otherwise, it's just going to want to float. And you don't want that because it creates a gap between the uh, bottom of the mold and where the tree is that makes no sense once the tree comes out of the mold in its entirety. Once they're all in, I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of alcohol. And at that point, there's nothing I can do with these. I have to just walk away and wait um, until they're dry. But before they do, I'm going to get that sparkle mica. And we're going to add the uh, snow effect onto the trees. So this is pretty much the whole thing. I just tap it lightly with a tiny little spoon in order to add it in, mostly on the branches and at the base of the tree. But I do go back and put some in just in the, the sky, basically, for lack of a better word, uh, in little bits. But this is, you see, just adding it generally around. Um, it takes about half a scoop for each bar just tapping it lightly like that. And you want to do it while the soap is still kind of tacky so that the 
powder sticks in one place because as soon as I uh, am finished with this, I have to hit it with another blast of alcohol. And if it's not tacky, that powder will just fly everywhere and you'll be seeing it in the air for the next half an hour. But this soap is still wet and that's not going to be a problem. While I'm waiting for all of that to dry, I'm going to put together my fragrance. The first way thing that I do is I add four little uh, scoops, I guess, or squirts of vitamin E oil. I do that first because otherwise I'll forget. Winter contains about five different oils that are blended together in different proportions. It's a really complicated scent and takes a bit of time to put together. There's uh, cedar and pear and bergamot and uh, a bunch of other things in it. But a lot of the scents that are in the winter blend contain uh, vanilla. And that's kind of a thing that you have to prepare for because one of the uh, downsides to adding any scent that contains vanilla in it, which is what gives vanilla its uh, traditional fragrance, is that it turns soap brown. And in a case like this, where I've got a lot of white that's going to be going into the soap, Nobody wants anything to be turning brown, because brown snow sounds disgusting, frankly, and nobody wants that. So once I'm done blending all of this, there's an additive that I have to put in to the fragrance that's a color stabilizer, and that's what that is right there. It's vanilla color stabilizer, and you have to add it in a one-to-one -one ratio with the amount of uh, fragrance oil that has the vanilla in it in order to prevent that browning effect. You get used to it. Um, in certain soaps, it doesn't matter. Soaps that are already dark in color, uh, like coffee, sex, and cigarettes, it makes no difference. I don't care if it gets more brown than it already is. Um, but in a case like this, where there's a lot of white and light colors that are going into the soap, we definitely have to prepare for it. So once it's in, all I do is just stir it up, and you see it kind of makes this cloudy effect. So I've waited now, and uh, the, the bases are now hard enough in order to tilt them without the soap moving. And they're not really fully hard. If I were to touch them, you'd feel that they were sort of squishy on the inside, sort of like half done jello. But they are hard enough so that once you tilt them back and forth, they're not going to move. So that means that it is time now to tilt our mold. And I do this in a couple of different stages. But in the first stage, there, it's tilted at a pretty severe angle, as you're about to see. I use some uh, large mica containers to do it, and just tilt it upward like this. Um, I do that because the first thing that I want to do is add the white snow soap just to the bottom of the mold so that it creates like a, 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 like a snow hill behind the tree. And in order to do that and keep the white where it needs to go, it's going to need to be um, tilted so that it doesn't flow up to the top of the soap. So once I uh, have the white and it is melted, I'm going to be adding the fragrance and stirring really, really well. And you have to stir very well because if you don't, what happens is that the fragrance oil will sort of pool together and leave these really unsightly kind of oily pits in your soap. So you have to be sure that you're mixing thoroughly in order to disperse all of the fragrance oil and vitamin E into the soap base itself. I'm going to pour all four of these and spray them with alcohol and then basically I'm going to walk away and it's going to take several minutes, probably more like 20 minutes, uh, for these to kind of heat up enough so that I can tilt the mold in the other direction in order to be able to do the other side. So time passes once again. And you'll see I'm testing it and it still leaves kind of a divot. You can see the little mark where my finger was, but it's not breaking through the white. And I can flip that mold without it breaking through and just spilling onto the other side. And that's the consistency you want. If it's too cold, the layers won't hold together. So that's the soap that we use to create the lens at the very beginning. I'm putting it back in the microwave now to heat up. And once it comes to temperature, I'm going to add the color and the fragrance. The color in this case, I'm going to come back with it. You're not going to be able to see it very well, unfortunately. I didn't realize like how poorly lit that was. but. It's called a uh, stormy blue. I know it looks black there, but it really isn't. It's actually kind of like a bluish gray. 
and I'm not going to need much of it. I don't want to make the soap fully opaque. I could if I added enough color, but all I want to do is tint it so that you have kind of a, a stormy sky effect. So I'm going to add my fragrance and add my color, and you'll see that I'm not going to be adding very much color at all to this mix in order to create the final shade. But I am going to, see it's really not very much at all, right? The soap is melted, the fragrance is added, and that's all the mica that I added. I'm going to stir that up really well and I'm going to hit it with some alcohol. The alcohol will allow the mica to disperse in the soap itself so that I don't get streaks of color. And you'll have just an even color blend all the way around. Once I get that done, I'm going to pour it the same way that I poured the white so that it kind of flows down to what is the top of the design, but now the bottom of the mold. And so this way you have a separation between the sky part and the snow part. And that's the final color. You see it's really pale and it's not opaque at all. As soon as I start pouring it, you'll, you'll be able to see that it's a very translucent color. I'm also spraying the alcohol on the soap that's already been poured in order to create a good bond between these layers. There is nothing more frustrating than unmolding these things and having them separate at the seams. It's such a pain in the ass. And it's fixable, but you don't want to do it if you can avoid it. So liberally spraying with alcohol is the way to go in that situation. So I'm doing the same exact thing that I did with the white, just in reverse, and pouring that out just exactly the same way so that all of that sort of blue-gray color is sitting now near the bottom of the mold but the top of the design. And you see the bubbles that are on the upper left-hand um, cavity? Those are going to go away in just a second as soon as I hit it with the, the alcohol. They just disappear. It's just one shot does it and that's the end. Walking away again, Coming back, coming back again, again, this is about 15, 20 minutes later, once again. And same thing again, but this time I'm going to lower the angle that I had the soap at. So instead of these really big mica containers that I had going on, um, I'm going to put a slightly shorter mica container, and this way the angle will not be as severe so that I can pour the next level of soap. I'm going to reheat the white because the white is now in the container. It's hardened up enough where I have to reheat it in order to be able to pour it. So I'm going to reheat that right up in the microwave once again and um, spray with alcohol before I start. And once that comes out of the microwave, I'm going to just pour the second layer in the same way that I poured the first. The only difference is that the angle is not as steep, so more of that center portion of the soap will get filled as I go along. So there you go. I'm not pouring very much because if I pour too high it'll just pour out all over the stove and goodness knows I clean up enough soap all over my stove as it is. So I'm really not pouring all that much, just trying to get a little bit more in there it doesn't matter if it goes all the way to the bottom, it makes absolutely no difference. Just to get a little bit more of the center portion filled. I'm going to hit it with a, a little bit of alcohol to spread it out. See, it kills that bubble right there in the upper left. And I'm going to walk away again and just leave it alone until it hardens up enough to flip it around and do the exact same process on the other side. Now, I'm cutting out a lot of time here in between waiting for these things to happen. This particular soap takes quite a while to make. A lot of the pours and the kinds of soaps that I do don't take anywhere near this long to produce. This is kind of a long video, um, but this is um, one of the more complicated designs that I do. And you see that the, there's a, a skin that's formed on the top of that container of soap, so I'm going to reheat it once again in the microwave. It really doesn't matter how many times you reheat it as long as you don't overcook it. You don't want it to boil and you don't want it to scorch, you're just heating it gently to create a, a liquid consistency that you can pour. So my microwave gets quite a workout. I, I often wonder if my neighbors like hear my microwave at four in the morning. Um, I did this video during the day so that you had uh, light, but yeah, I'm, I'm usually doing this in the middle of the night at like 4 a.m. Goodness knows what my neighbors think. Um, although I think they're kind of used to this level of madness by now. Pouring the blue-gray, again, the exact same way that I did before, um, just right into the middle there. And that's kind of it. 
you're just going to go back and f I just go back and forth like this. Uh, depending upon how thick the layers I do, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's six. It really doesn't matter. It's all getting done in the same way, though. It's just a lot of back and forth and lowering the angle each time I do it. Yes, it's tedious, um, and there's a lot of spraying of alcohol in between, but it's not a difficult process. It just takes time. So once the, the soap has kind of hardened up on both sides, now we're just going to lay it flat and pour what's left into that center cavity. Uh, which in this case is mostly going to be, if not all of it, uh, the blue-gray. Sometimes I have a little bit of white extra, so I'll do another layer of white first, but it's just a matter of how that day's pour comes out. In this case, you just got that, that blue-gray that's going to fill in the rest of the blanks once I uh, spray it with a little bit more alcohol in order to create good adhesion. Just pour that in and fill it up. So this is the last of the white. You can see it's just, there's really not much white left. I'm just using it up. And once it's done, I'll just wait a few minutes for this to, uh, to harden up just a bit. Fortunately, it's a thin layer, so it doesn't take that long. And get it into uh, the mold. The last layer of the soap is going to be that blue-gray and it's going to fill the entire rest of the mold. And that'll be it in terms of pouring it all. Once it's done, I just have to wait until I can move it, which takes a little bit of time. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Here we have, you know, it's been a few minutes later, and I'm, I'm going to put the blue gray in and fill it up to the top. Again, you always have to remember the alcohol. Believe me, if you miss it, you're going to wish you hadn't. Um, when the soap separated, it is such a nightmare. But filling it up to the top, and I will have enough to make like two little sample minis, and I have a new mold for that that I, I've gotten recently that you'll see in a minute. But pouring just the rest of the soap in, all the way to the top, and you can see how translucent that color is. It, it's not dark at all, and it's not opaque. It's kind of just an icy blue-gray color for the background. There's very little mica in it. You want to pour slowly. These uh, pouring pitchers are really great because they allow you a much more controlled pour but I only have one of them, so I wind up using ordinary plastic containers a lot. You get used to it, but these are definitely easier to work with. Once it's done, I have like a very little left, just enough for a couple of minis, and just gonna hit it with some alcohol. You'll see those bubbles disappear as soon as I hit it with the uh, alcohol, just like that. It's really simple. And gonna walk away yet again once it's already uh, cleared up. The only thing was that I had this little piece that hadn't quite melted that's kind of floating around like an iceberg in the one that's on your right, the right that's closest to you, so I'm kind of gonna just fish that out of there because I uh, didn't want to melt properly and I don't want it to be in my final final soap. It'll get remelted later and it'll be just fine. It just was a piece that didn't melt all the way. So when I uh, walk away for a while yet again like I said, it's time-consuming. I'm touching it, and it's not dry, it's not cool. It really isn't. But it does have a thick skin on it, like a half-done jello. I walk away, and I put it on the coffee table. About four hours later, I come back, and these are the minis that I did. They're little bat-shaped minis with uh, the extra little bit of that blue and blue-gray soap that I had. And I just popped those little minis right out of the mold. They're the same size as the heart-shaped ones I'd been using before, but this mold was on sale, and I couldn't resist the little bats. So I, I grabbed it for uh, little samples. So I have two to uh, send out to whoever gets them. I kind of do the samples at random. At least they're mostly random. And now it's time to unmold the soap. So normally I do this step 
actually at my desk on my work surface. It's a lot harder to do it here because it's less stable. But the first thing that I do is I take my stamp to stamp the back of the soaps. This is really hard to do on top of the stove because it's not a stable surface at all. You can see the, the cutting board is going bananas. Normally I do this on a much more flat and stable surface, but I wanted to show you how it's done. I had that stamp custom made in the UK. I have two of them. I have a larger one also, but this smaller one is a lot easier to work with. And it has the, uh, the BF Spider logo on the back. So these are now cool enough to pop out, and it's a lot easier on a much more flat and stable surface, but these are cool enough to pop. If it doesn't want to pop out easily, it just means it's not cool enough, and you should really walk away uh, and let it cool thoroughly. It's ho really hard to get out otherwise, but they, they pop out cleanly if they're cool enough. So you can see, you just, you know, you give it a little bit of a push and with the heel of your hand, and then sort of um, grab the edge of the mold and kind of pull it away to break the air seal that's holding the soap in place, and just use your thumbs and it'll pop right out. So they just come out like that, one at a time, and there's usually no problem. Sometimes with these lensed soaps, though, um, you have a little bit of a sticking problem with the front of the lens sticking to the bottom of the mold. This is really easy to fix, but it does happen, and it's happened here. You can see at the base of the tree, I've just pointed it out there, it looks like a bubble. That's because the little film of clear soap has separated from that black base. This is really easy, easily fixable. I usually do it with a sculpting tool, but a chopstick will work just as well. You just rub it, and it comes out. So here are the four soaps. Now that they're finished, um, in their entirety. The whole thing takes about four hours, which is the same length of time as all the others take. It's just that these need a lot more babysitting because there are more steps. Normally it's all drying time, but these don't take that long. So I hope you enjoyed that. This was my first four into real video. I want to thank Pi for making the spinny logo that I'm going to be using from now on. Please let me know what you thought. Subscribe, whatever you got to do. And thank you to all my wonderful people on Patreon. Please come join us. We have a lot of fun there. Night.